with Cindy um, back here at Studio Lou and um, today I have another journal walkthrough video for you. So this is the last in my series of fiber and textile arts related um, art junk journals. So this book um, is a reused upcycled um, book, The Way the Crow Flies by Anne Marie McDonald. I love this book because it's just it has a nice feel to it. It was a perfect size for a journal. Um, I did a piece of spine jewelry for the outside. It is made with ribbons and laces and it has this piece of vintage jewelry on top and the whole thing removes on this um, clip so you don't have to have it there if you're writing it will allow the book to lay flatter to remove it. So we'll just set that aside. Uh, so the front of the book the journal I have covered with this beautiful um, gold confetti and so it's all been covered with a matte glue and because the theme of the book was crows I decided to use one of the uh, parts of the book plate on the front cover and then the other theme of course of this book is you know textile and fiber arts so this is a piece of crochet uh, um, what is it? Lace, I guess. It was from a large snowflake piece, like doily type crochet. And so I've inked it in black and I've um, sewn around the whole outside of this card. And so it's, um, it has a nice leathery feel. This book has a really great leathery feel to it. And so the closure is another one of those door handle um, closures. And then I have hand dyed this elastic, like a bluey purple color to go with the book cover. And on the back, this is one of my handmade ceramic buttons that just basically holds on to the knot to close the book. This is the top view of the book. There we go, just make sure we're in frame. <laughs> There's lots going on in here. Um, and this is the side view of the book. This book will be going up in my Etsy shop probably sometime next week. Along with um, the one from the last video that I did. And that will be the end of the Fiber Arts Journals for a while. So there will be six in total in my Etsy shop. So when you open this book up, um, there's lots going on in this front cover. So first I made a pocket that was the first page of the book. So it has a really nice, um, really nice kind of opening to the book. And then inside the pocket, there's a few goodies here. You'll see in the back, I've done some stamping on the inside and the book has been bound with a fabric. And so this is a piece of handmade ephemera, a journal card that I made that has some incredibly beautiful um, crochet on the front and the backing is has been collaged and I sewed around it. This is the note from the bookmaker that tells you a little about my books and how to use them. And then this is a vintage yarn sample from a 70s, um, a store that operated in Quebec, but they ordered um, yarn from all over the world. And so this is one of those yarn samples that yarn stores used to send out to um, potential, or sorry, not yarn stores, but yarn manufacturers would send out these samples. They still do today to yarn stores to basically try to sell their, their yarns to them to carry in their stores. Oops, I tucked it back in there. I don't, actually, I think I did that wrong. can't remember how I had everything in here. It all fits. It's just a little bit, um, here we go, a little bit tricky. So then over here, um, this clips on and off. I'll just pull it off to show you the paper. So this is actually some really pretty vintage wrapping paper. And then this is a card. It's um, held on with a paper clip that has this vintage button with a, a flower. And um, so that can come off. And then this is hand spun yarn that's been sewn on the top and you open it up and there's lined paper inside to write on and it's double-sided and so the card just um, slips right on to the paper and then this clip just kind of secures it in place not necessary but just fun um, so then on this page we have a belly band it's a free motion quilt and underneath are a couple of handmade journal cards. Both have been um, decorated with some lace and some crochet doily, and they are both textile images from a vintage textile book. 
and they just pop right in there together. Um, and this side is just some children's writing paper. And then on this side, this is a large pocket with nice um, vintage like button and um, fastener related drawings. And inside is a large journal card. And um, it has some cool, uh, I guess, I'm not sure what that is. It looks almost like rug hooking. It's all from vintage craft um, books. And on this side is some coffee dyed imagery from the vintage book. And then an envelope, and when you open it up, there's a large journal card inside with a tapestry on it. And this is avocado dyed paper with some handmade paper running down the center. And then just um, an interesting drawing from a vintage magazine that talks about basically the honeybee quilting, the um, honeycomb quilt. And some neat, neat paper and on this side we have a belly band made from a piece of lace and then inside is a little handmade booklet that I threw together inside it is just um, some different paper so there's some marbled paper avocado dyed paper some pink notebook paper and it's just an extra little journal to write in And this brown paper is actually the back cover um, of um, the newsletter for a 1976 or 1978 guild newsletter for a spinning and weaving guild in Toronto. And this is actually one of the coolest parts is that there was always a weaving sample in the back of these um, newsletters. So I just used it as a little tuck and I made a little journal card with some of my hand spun yarn sewn on and that just tucks right in there. And some cool um, vintage magazine images from a textile magazine that contained all the patterns to make these amazing like house dresses. And on this side is more, this is, um, I'll just show you both sides of the page. So this is uh, an embroidered pineapple. And then I've used this yarn sample, get that little one out of there, with this beautiful rainbow chenille just to make a little tuck. This is from the Village Weaver, which is a business that I don't believe exists anymore um, in Toronto. And then I made a little writing sort of tablet out of this tall uh, imagery from a craft book, a vintage craft book. And then that opens up and it just pops right on here. And then you turn the page and there's another page of this um, imagery from a craft book. And then I've taken a form, uh, like a sort of 70s order form from the Lily Mills Company hand weaving department um, from North Carolina. And you can write on that and it's just kind of a cool piece of ephemera, authentic vintage ephemera, just to make the book a little more interesting. And this is Easter egg dyed paper. And on this side is Brazilian crochet blueprint. And I've made a pocket out of a vintage page from a textile book, craft book. And inside are a couple goodies. So these are just a little journal tag and a little journal card. Um, this is hand spun yarn and some crochet on top just for writing space. And this is just more, um, these are drawings, fashion illustrations, vintage fashion illustration from a French uh, craft magazine. And then this is a little tuck pocket made from the same kind of paper from a vintage craft book. And these are journal cards that are inside. There's actually three of them. And they all just tuck in here together in this little envelope. And then we have another big pocket here with a large journaling card with this amazing uh, bird tapestry. And this is all backed in really interesting vintage sewing book paper. And this side is another pocket, but this one is made from a plaid cotton fabric. 
and inside is a tall tag that's been collaged by me and um, has brown paper to write on on the back. And this is a little file folder and on the back it's just been um, gessoed in blue gesso with some um, hand stitched embroidery from a vintage panel that I that I've cut up and more crochet blueprint. This is a stitched page um, that has this lace along the side and it's on Easter egg dyed paper and this is just more of the vintage textile drawings and um, photography. And this is um, a pocket made from a vintage pattern for these dresses. And inside is a large journal card. And these are illustrations um, for buttonholing. And on this side is a nice little tuck that's been made from some really cool uh, paper. It's an illustration of a bunch of notions for sewing. So scissors and threads and um, a measuring tape and a needle and pin uh, case, um, a thimble, and just kind of a packet of odds and ends, embroidery thread, needles, buttons. So it's kind of cute. And then underneath it is this nice journal card a large journal card. It's a nice heavyweight journal card. And this is um, just the back. It's upside down for um, a Nihilus Leclerc loom from the hand weavers and spinners in 1977. I just left it in there. I thought I'd pop it in upside down because it wasn't the whole booklet. So um, I thought this was just some nice imagery here and you could, you know, glue or stick things on here if you wanted to. I envision these books being kind of a place not only to write, but also to just kind of stick things in like inspirations. So... Also, I like to put a few things in upside down. I think it's interesting. It kind of keeps you um, paying attention <laughs> a little bit. And I need that these days because, I don't know, part of the, the I think, being home all the time and like not socializing I think it makes us overall just like our attention span is less so I was thinking about that as I was putting these books together <laughs> so this is handmade paper and easter egg dyed paper and some paper dolls and then again see I've popped these girls in upside down I just thought they looked funny and interesting in this way um so it's coffee dyed paper from a vintage craft book and some more imagery from a vintage craft book and it has uh, marble dyed handmade paper and children's writing paper and um, this is just some nice paper marble paper that I dyed and this is again that vintage uh, wrapping paper so this book has three signatures and this is the center of the first and second and you'll see that the spine is all nice and sparkly. This has a hidden spine that has a pamphlet stitch and it's hidden so as to uh, maintain the outer spine of the book. And inside here I've made this little fun torn booklet um, with coffee dyed, yeah it's all coffee dyed paper and it's been sewn together front and back using this beautiful yarn sample card. So you can write in here and um, yeah it's just an extra little journal for fun. And some cool paper with um, some of my favorite hand spun yarn that I spun on the side. And over here we have a journal tag and it is fastened there with this nice vintage button. It's a little yellow bouquet of flowers. And the top of the tag, this is wet felting and it's a loop and it has some beautiful sheep's wool locks just hanging from it. And that's all on the back of crochet blueprint and more of that lovely paper. And on this side we have a tuck with coffee dyed paper and underneath there's this girl hanging out here. She's from a vintage textile book. The models were so cool back then and like really, really interesting photography. And this is just a postcard. It's a heavyweight. You could actually use this as a postcard. Um, it's, you could, you could decorate the front if you wanted to and right on the back. And then this is just an image of a handmade puppet from a craft book and some lace has been sewn up the side. It's a nice shade of violet. 
and you can see the um, metallic stitching on the back, the zigzag. And this is just a stitched page with more metallic stitches. And on this side, we have this tall tuck area on crochet blueprint. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the, this is a journal card and it is, oh, it's actually double-sided. I forgot, it's like a booklet. And so you can open it up to lined paper and that tucks in here. And then this is a little journal tag that's been collaged. There's brown paper on the back and it's embellished with a, a bead that I felted. Um, so it's a wool bead with different sheep's locks hanging out. And that just tucks right up in the top here and hangs at the top of the book. And on the back, we have this beautiful golden yellow handmade paper from Koreatown in Toronto. And this is a silver doily. Some nice scrapbook paper with red hand spun yarn down the side and coffee dyed gridded paper that I dyed and this is some lace pattern knitting lace pattern and this is a large pocket that's been made from um, different Excuse me, I'm falling asleep apparently. Um, I do a different book page. It's a book page from a craft book and some nice um, imagery from a knitting book. And then inside is a large journal tag. And it's got all sorts of cool French knitting related instruction. And this page is Easter egg dyed and it's been stamped with some matryoshkas. And more of the crochet blueprint and some lovely vintage wallpaper and then we're in the center of the second signature and you can see here this is actually um, the, a color work pattern that you could stitch of two beautiful snowy owls and that's more vintage wallpaper crochet blueprint, Easter egg dyed paper. It's got some nice tracking down here. I dyed it with blue Easter egg dye and it's really pretty. It's also very crinkly and I love that about it. And on this side, there is some blueprint for sewing. Um, I believe this was a jacket. And on the back, some applique ideas for doing applique animals. This is avocado dyed paper, so it's like a pinky shade. And this paper has been stitched around with metallic thread. And this is another silver doily and some cool paper. Crochet blueprint, stitched paper, and this on top is wet felted wool on silk, so it's got that beautiful rippling to it. And this is just some um, stitching related imagery and a cool picture, another vintage model from um, a 70s craft magazine and a little pocket with lace and it has this nice coffee dyed paper on the back and on the front is just um, a little pattern to do some color work. So you could actually use this pattern. Um, it's actually got the whole, the whole key to um, be able to create this knitted um, pattern. And just some stitched embroidered floral and hand spun yarn. And then inside between the two last signatures, I have stuck one of the entire booklets from the Ontario Handweavers and Spinners Guild from 1981. So if you've been following my videos in this series, you'll see these booklets being a recurring theme. So I was lucky enough to be um, to inherit the collection of looms and weaving related books and samples from um, a really talented weaver in the 70s who has since passed on and she had an amazing collection that I'm sharing a bit of with these journals. So inside these booklets they're really cool actually. It's a very high quality booklet. You never get this nowadays in a guild. They're really nice and they're like they're printed on really quality paper. So this is just what's in the bulletin <clears throat> and some information about stitchable cloth. 
types of weaving. Um, these are some photographs of the guest speakers that they featured in the guild meetings. And this is about lichens and how they're used to do dye work. And this is sort of um, an article about a member and her accomplishments. And their note board and sort of their submission, their contest. And some cool, um, these are advertisements for businesses that don't even exist anymore. And in the inside, in the calendar of their events, I placed a large journal card with some um, collaging and some lace and I've stitched around it with um, gold and purple thread and it's got some vintage imagery and it's nice and coffee dyed on the back. And this is about effective demonstrations and displays. So when you're doing a show and you're trying to show your, um, your goods for sale, how you can display them. And then just some more information about their different events that they went to and how successful they were. And this is some spinning instructional information and their um, other guilds communications and some information on Canadian sheep, a Lincoln and a Rambouillet. And then more um, advertising from mostly businesses that don't exist anymore. Some do. And um, this is about lichen dye samples. So it's their some of their um, recipe for their lichen dye. And then this is a, a pattern for stitch double cloth for weaving. And so once again, I think I mentioned earlier in the video that these booklets always had this really cool sample in the back. So this one is particularly impressive. It's green and yellow and it's a really interesting weave. And then there's these um, yarn samples. These are naturally dyed yarn samples that were done with lichen. And um, so now we begin the last signature. It starts with this big pocket and some yarn that's been sewn there. And inside is a large journal card with lined paper on the back. And it's got some fabric sewn on the front. And then here at the top, we have some silk sari that's been sewn across the top. It's iridescent and purple and has these lovely strands that just kind of hang. And this is certificate paper with this lovely gold embossing coffee dyed sewing um, buttonholing instructions and this is um, more uh, this is for a sleeve pattern this is sort of the, the graphics for sewing a pattern and then this is crochet blueprint with this nice fabric baggie and inside of it are a couple little things it's a couple little journal cards this one has a vintage button on the front and they both just tuck in here And then on this side, I've kind of done like an upper tag and a lower, um, or sorry, an upper pocket and a lower pocket. This is like a little free motion kind of quilting and I sewed around both of them in the same way. I stamped this one and I attached a ribbon. And in here is um, a journal tag. So that just tucks right into that pocket. And it has uh, some yarn, hand spun yarn on the bottom. And this is just a tall tag with some ribbon that's been sewn on. And that's on graph paper. And this is Easter egg dyed paper and heavy watercolor paper. And this is a pocket with some nice crochet that's been inked in like a light aqua green. And there are a couple things in here. So a tall collage tag with some batik fabric on top and a little journal card with some ribbon and a little Peruvian worry doll. And here I have, um, this is a just kind of a journal card that tucks into this little backing of a belly band on the other side of the page. And then there's some tapestry images here on top of a pattern paper. 
And on the back is a belly band and it has been, it's, it's a skirt sewing image and it has been stuffed with three large collage journal tags or sorry, journal cards. You can see the stitching on the back. I've stitched on all, oh no, yeah, all of these, all three are stitched on the back. And so this one has fabric on it. This one has some nice ribbon on top. So they're fun, nice to journal on, nice heavyweight journal cards. I also found that I really love writing in a journal that has different ways of writing. Like being able to write on a card, you know, to write what's happening on in your day is kind of a nice little way to just make your book more interesting. Like I definitely think these books will make really nice heirlooms. I think about how wonderful it would be to have like your grandmother's journal and it was this kind of book that she got to write about, you know, her life and maybe her hobbies and like I just think that these books have a lot of potential and they're a lot of fun. So this is Imagery from a, a vintage book, um, craft magazine and on the back there's some little hands here with some needles in them. And this is postcard that's been stuck down on paper and just tucked on there is a little booklet I made, a little extra journal with a crochet motif on the front. And it has Easter egg dyed lined paper inside. It's just a fun little extra booklet. And it just tucks on there. And this is um, just some nice journal paper that has some flowers on it, all in pastel colors crochet blueprint and this is a large tag with some really pretty embroidered applique on the front and underneath you can see some embroidery images and this is a journal card with some nice yarn sewn on the front and I like the yellow and orange on that card and then back here is kind of an eclectic page of just some collaging of um, weaving and a sewing image and then this is a note page from an old business and some handwritten notes about um following like a sleeve length like it's just uh you know like a, a crafter's note <laughs> and then there's this uh, little pocket that i made out of some of the imagery from a book and inside is a large journal card with some real um, vintage buttons that are sewn on and it's stamped on the back with this bird on brown paper and that's just the whole image from the book and this is the center of the signature the other thing I'll, I'll show maybe now is all of the signatures are tied in a pamphlet stitch that has two long pieces of embroidery floss and they've all been um, adorned with the I've tied something to the end of each of them so this is one of my handmade wire yarn beads and this is a vintage button um, maybe you could see at the bottom here there's a little crystal and a glass bead that are tied to these ones. I'm not sure if that's visible. I'll bring it up closer to the camera so you can see them dangling here. Um, there should be one more. Yeah, over here. So it's another vintage button and, um, oh, and another crystal. Oops, I'm in a frame. There we go, a vintage a red button and a crystal. <laughs> okay. And then on this side is um, a pocket and it has this little journal card inside, just a little, little decoration. And this is actually sewing pattern paper. So this is the paper you cut out when you're doing, um, you're, uh, you're sewing a pattern. It's on both sides, like a collage. I'll just put that back at the top. And this is just more of that notebook paper with flowers and um, lace chart, knitting chart. And just some interesting uh, knitting related terminologies. And then this is um, a guild weaving sample of sample double cloth weaving. So in the, in the booklet that's back in this journal, ooh, excuse me. I'm falling asleep in this video. This is terrible. <laughs> Thank goodness it's Friday. It's a rainy afternoon today. So I think I'm just, I'm just sleepy. 
And you see there's a tag inside and it has some um, sewing pattern and brown paper on back. It's been stitched with zigzag and has yarn on the top. So what I was saying is in this, this is the weaving and it's talked about in the booklet that is in the, in the center of the two signatures. So if you have an interest in weaving, this is sort of like a little crash course. And then this is just some terminology for sewing and some vintage craft book. Um, then I have made this into a pocket on this side. There's hand spun yarn at the bottom and a little journal card with some lace. Heavyweight watercolor paper and a nice um, fashion um, illustration from a vintage book. This is blue painted surface with some handmade paper at the bottom. It's really nice to write on. A magazine page with some textiles, coffee dyed sewing grid, and then this is a pocket with some interesting lace imagery on it and inside is this little tag with a crochet motif on top of a flower. And then more certificate paper and on this side is more of this iridescent purple sari silk and just a picture of um, a sewing bust. More fashion illustration and at the back there's this lovely big pocket that's been made with the book plate and uh, a sewing a piece of sewing imagery so it kind of carries both themes through the book and inside is a large tag that shows some stitching details and the top of the tag has this loop this is um, silk wool um, wet felting as that pops in there and that's my little Moonbee stamp, because um, this is the name of my line of journals. I call them Moonbee books. And on the back again is that button that I talked about in the beginning. So this is the Where the Crows Fly textile art, fiber art, junk journal. And um, I hope you like it because I loved making it and it was a lot of fun. And I, I really am having a lot of fun making these books. So thank you so much for joining me. If you would like to see more videos, I would love for you to subscribe. Uh, click the little bell for notifications so you can see when I make new videos. All of the details on my social media will be in the description box of this video, as well as some new projects that I'm working on. Um, I have about three different series um, of videos that I'm working on right now. You may have seen one of my past videos that I just finished making about Pasita Abad. Um, if not, go check it out. And um, yeah, I hope everyone is staying safe and well and you aren't going loopy yet in your lockdown. I know some places are starting a little bit of slow opening and to that I say be careful. <laughs> so have a wonderful day and thank you for joining me.